Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. So we're going to be picking up on Lee's path, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. It's very late at night. I've been drinking quite a bit of sake, and I'm in a good mood. Let's get some, let's get some more content out of the way, guys. All right, here we go. All right. Oh yeah, big announcement. Uh, some of you, <clears throat> some of you probably saw on my on my message. And I posted, um, I am turning this channel into a business, Strike Queen Gaming LLC. I paid my fee for my business license, and I applied for the state that I live in. And it's got to wait for them to get back to me. So, yes, I'm making it official, guys. This is a business. More content to come. All right. My voice comes out as a squeaking mess, barely coherent, but Lee doesn't respond. He's just staring at the door. After a moment, I realize why. And there's a muffled clopping sound on the other side, and it's getting progressively louder as if it's getting close. The door rattles violently as something smashes into it. The sound of the impact and splintering wood is enough to make me take several steps backwards, at least turning around and shoving me towards the other hallway. And there's panic in his eyes, but he's trying to keep himself composed for the both of us. I'm thankful for that, because I'm scared I'm about to flip out. The next slap causes the cracks to form on the door, flakes of wood falling to the floor. What the fuck is that? That makes everything finally hit, and we're both running. Well, running as much as we could. Lee is closer to a rushed hobble, but he's surprisingly fast, able to keep up with me, and it looks like this is somehow taking less of a toll on him than our previously slower pace together. He catches me, he catches my staring, my staring and rolls his eyes, an annoyed look in them as he nods in the front of, a, in front of both of us. He's not even breaking a sweat. Pay attention, kid, not on me. But right, sorry. We're near the next turn of the hallway, ignoring all doors we run past. They clearly lead to offices or rooms, and right now, finding an exit and escaping is the only thing on our minds. This place is already coming down, and who knows what's behind that door. But whatever it is, it's not pleasant. Jesus, that was loud. The answer finally answer arrives when a louder, crashing sound behind us occurs. Stopping at the turn, I turn around to see what looks like a giant. It's hard to tell what species they are at this distance. All I'm able to recognize is a familiar hard hat and reflective vest. Is that construction? It's that construction worker from earlier, but now that I'm looking at him, he looks wrong, like he's a grotesque imitation of a living creature, and something closer to a horror movie monster. Then Lee's pulling me away and around the corner, and we're back to running. I don't hear any footsteps behind us, though. I don't think it's chasing us. What are you doing? It's a person, I think. You think? It's a construction worker, but he doesn't look right. It doesn't matter. Just keep running. Whatever was behind it, whatever was behind that door was definitely not right. And there's something off about it, and I'm curious what exactly is going on uh, is going on, but nowhere near enough to go back. At least I think we're going the right way this time. And the place is still unstable, but it looks significantly less run down this way. And there's no holes in the floor, and the walls only look mildly dilapidated. I just hope we I just hope we never have to see that thing again. You feel it feels like waking up from a sick dream when we arrive at the next apartment. I'm not able to see which area of the hospital we're in now, but I'm too distracted by my racing heart and light head. As soon as we barge through the doors leading here, it's like we entered an entirely different dimension. This area looks like a proper hospital. Everything is clean and sterile, like it's been freshly cleaned and polished. Lee just looks Lee looks just as dumbfounded as I do, and as if to confirm that the place we came from exists, he tries to open the door we just came from. Except instead of opening to a site of decay, there's only the sound of door of the door rattling. The sound of metal clinking against each other. It locked behind us. Lee tries a bit harder before taking a step back. He looks ready to kick in the entire door when I grab his arm. His head spins around to face me, and I realize that I shouldn't have grabbed him without asking, but that focused look in his eyes fades away, and he steps away from the door. It's, it's just locked. We don't want to go back anyway. But what if that guy is still in there? Is still in there? The door being locked might help. He just broke through a pair of doors. But they were old and breaking apart already. I think these will hold. At least I hope they will, but it looks like that's enough for him. He nods and walks around the room. His limp is a lot more prominent than usual. It's likely from all the physical exertion. Does your leg hurt? It'll be fine. That's not what I asked. He huffs out a sigh, sounding resigned to his fate. He doesn't sound annoyed at the very least. But I just don't think he likes people. I just don't think he likes people doting on him. How <laughs> very ironic. My pain tolerance is high. It's barely noticeable. But, kid, I'm fine. You sound just like Charlie, always worrying about me. Maybe there's a reason for that. It sounds like she has the right idea. He just snorts and smiles at that. I want to say annoyed at him, but I just can't when his overbite peeks over his lips. 
Lee's smiles have always been has always had a lot of teeth, but it's very rare to see him grin. When he does, his incisors pop out and over his bottom lip. It's endearing, and seeing something so rare because of me, it's rewarding in a way I'd rather not look too deep into. Not right now, at least. Looking around the room, my eyes lock onto a nearby seat, and without a moment's hesitation, I fall into it. I didn't even realize I've been I've been panting this whole time, but getting my legs off the ground suddenly makes their screaming all the more real. It's uh, a little bit more. I might be slim, but I'm really out of shape. The last time I did any significant exercise was when I was on the baseball team in middle school. Looking over at Lee, he's examining some shelving. He looks unaffected by the run, despite being the one with the severe limp. Why are my friends all, in, all also in shape? There's Lucas, at least, but I don't think he exercises much. And then again, he's so thin for someone who looks like he barely leaves the house. I might be skinny, but Lucas looks lean enough to fool someone who isn't looking very hard. You alright, kid? You look like you're passing out. No, I'm fine. Just, uh, don't worry about it. I'm just wondering why he looks so good while we're lost in some abandoned hospital. Yeah, great, that's gonna sound normal. I wonder how much of that exercise he gets in, he, he gets his fights. He did mention he used to get into fights often, but that's probably in the past, right? He wouldn't be trying to scare up, scare people off if he got into fights often, right? I can only hope so. The thought of Lee with a bloodied nose and knuckles is nearly enough to return that nauseous feeling. What's that? The alertness in his voice causes me to stand at end. The fear of some other disaster occurring decimating any relief I had. Listening closely, I can pick out what he heard. It's a voice, or maybe multiple of them. It's hard to tell with how muffled it sounds. At focusing on them, I recognize a voice that I've missed greatly. It's Lily! What? The voice! It's Lily's! Come on, we can catch up! Grabbing his arm, he tenses up, and I expect a little resistance, but I'm pleasantly surprised when he allows me to pull him. Flicking my gaze towards him for a second, that handsome, toothy smile is beaming across his face. It's stupid to feel so relieved despite still being, this, still being in this cursed place, but after escaping certain death, I guess even someone like Lee can't stop a smile. When Lee and I turn the corner, the first thing we see is Lucas panting against a wall with Lily gently patting his back. They look exhausted, and their fur is matted in sweat like they've been running a marathon. Hey, Lily! She lifts her head. She lifts her head up, but all she lifts her head up, but all Lucas does is let out a low groan. It sounds like someone like it sounds like he's about to lose the lunch we had earlier. At the sight of us, she gives a massive wave that matches her incredible smile. She mutters something to Lucas, and he gives her a small nod before she gets up and walks over to us. I is he? Is he all right? Lee's standing next to me. His expression back to that cool and calm neutrality. He's not looking at her while she says that. He's tilting his head and looking past towards the fox. Oh, yeah, he's totally fine. He's just a little nauseous. That's good. We've had some weird stuff happen to us. You wouldn't believe it. Lee takes a step towards me and leans down to our heights, talking to us in a low mutter, in a low mutter as Lucas wouldn't be able to hear us anyway. I don't think Lee is, is used to people with, sens with such sensitive ears. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of the kid. Oh, one second, guys. <coughs> <coughs> oh goodness! Something got my allergies going tonight. <sniffs> With a nod from both of us, he walks past us and kneels down next to Lucas. The fox pulls away from him at first, but when Lee places his hand on the fox's back, he relaxes a little. Okay, I'm back. Okay, whatever happened really frazzled him up. I found him having a panic attack. It looked really bad. I wasn't able to calm him down, and I think he really wore himself out. Really? Yeah, I don't know what happened. He wouldn't tell me. When I found him, he was lying on the ground. I think he was about to vomit or did so already. Is he doing all right? She turns and comes to stand next to me, both of us watching as the fox takes deep breaths. Even from here, I can see how much his hands are shaking. I don't think he does very well under pressure. I don't think he's hurt anywhere. Neither of us are, but he's not taking it well. I wish you were there. Me? There's no hiding the shock in my voice or covering my face. She gives me a smile, but looking at her now, I can see just how exhausted she looks. This must be really taking a toll on her. Yeah, he always looks calmer around you. I think you'd have known what you think he would have known what to do. No way. I would have been panicking just as much as he did. I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Even if you don't do anything, I think he enjoys your presence. I think he finds it soothing. I think you give me too much credit. I'm not so sure about that. A thumping sound echoes throughout the hall, and I'm worried that the figure managed to storm their way through, a, through the locked door and is following us. That is until I see Oscar almost slip over running around the corner. He's got an excited grin on his face, and he looks drenched head to toe in sweat. Has he been running this whole time? 
Despite coming from the other end of the, other end of the long hallway, it takes him barely any time to cross over to us with his long strides. He stops at Lucas, but after Lee shakes his head and nods towards us, he continues over to Lily and myself. Hey, dudes and dudettes! Hey, hey, dudes and dudettes. Let me, <clears throat> let me do that voice. Hey, dudes and dudettes. You guys are looking great, by the way. The sweat and dirt are a great mix. He flashes us a smile, and it's enough to crack a little giggle out of Lily. Even I can't help but smile at his antics. It's not particularly funny, but after everything that happened that's happened today, I'm willing to take any reprieve. Did you manage to find a pool to take a dip in? Looks like you had a better time than we did. You, you could certainly say something like that. I found the emergency room, but I wasn't able to get out of, out of the front doors. Locked up real tight. I may have also knocked over some chemicals that made me a little dizzy. Looks like he fared better than most of us. Yeah, I didn't bother looking around too much. Place is pretty weird, but not in a fun way, you know. Didn't want to just walk around. I just thought if I ran around the place enough, I'd run, I'd run away out. Or away to someone. I think weird's an understatement. It's a... Uh... I cut myself off when suddenly Lucas begins to push himself off the wall. He's looking shaky and unsteady, but accepts Lee's help. Yep. There we go. Thanks. Sorry for being such a child. You're fine, kid. After a couple more steps, he manages to pull away from Lee and step on his own two feet. His face looks, still looks grim, but he doesn't look like he's going to be sick anymore. Damn, you look, you look good covered in sweat. Jesus fucking Christ. How many looks good with his fur down? Not like that. You got a horny mind. Always the quiet types. Lee lets out a grumble, but Lucas looks too exhausted to really play with Oscar's antics. He must have picked up on that too because he doesn't make any more jokes. Lee said some fucked up shit happened to you guys. Are you two alright? Yeah, we're alright. It was a bit strange. Oh? You found a page out of Helena's diary in here? Yeah, I think it was one of the missing pages from the diary. Why would one of the missing pages from the diary be here? That doesn't make any sense. You probably just imagined it. It was definitely a page from the diary that had been ripped out. Probably just got ripped out when we were kidnapped, you know? I doubt a missing page would show up here, man. Enough. Nope. Okay. Lee's voice is firm and there's a serious undertone. It says now's the time to listen. It doesn't look like he approves of us wasting time discussing this. Let's just focus on getting out of here. Anyone know what floor we're on? I know the, gr I know the ground floor below us. I only went up one flight of stairs when I came from the ER, so that's probably our best bet. As much as I don't like this to be a stick in the mud, even I'm a little too tired of this place. Why didn't you mention that earlier? Let's go back down there and break a window or something. Better than standing here and fucking around. There's a wobble to Lucas's voice that stands out more than what he's saying. This place is really getting to him badly, and everyone notices it. If someone as composed as Oscar isn't doing well, I can't imagine how awful this must be for him. I know I'm only a couple steps away from my own panic attack. If it wasn't for Lily finding me, who knows what state I might have ended up in. I don't think it. I don't think that heading that way will get us there anytime soon. I went around the block before I got here, or maybe I got here already and no one was here yet. Anyway, I think the way, I think that way's a bust. If we just get down to the ground floor, there's always exits available for emergencies. They have they have been they have to be available to evacuate if something happens. We can find one of those or a window. We'll find a staircase then. Anyone seen one? Lucas raises his hand and everyone looks at him, most of us waiting expectantly while Lee looks more confused than he raises his hand at all. I ran pa I ran past one when I had a panic attack. I think it leads down, but I didn't get a good look at it. I remember where it is. Thank you. Can you lead us to it? Yeah, it's just around the corner over here. He points towards the opposite end of the hallway from where Lee and I came from. It looks just as sterile as the rest of the floor, but it can get us out of here. I don't think anyone cares. Alright, let's get out of here. It's strange seeing Lee take such an active role in the group. He's always been the most quiet one, rarely giving his input unless it's important. Then again, this probably counts as important. Our group trots off down the hallway, Lucas at the front with Lily. There's a gap between Oscar, who is right behind the two at the front, and the two of us hanging around, hanging behind. There's a quick pace to our walking that no one's acknowledging because what's there to say? Everyone wants to get out of here as soon as possible, and we don't want to wait any we don't want to wait us any second longer. Despite feeling safer with all of us together, I notice that Lee's standing right next to me, barely leaving any gap between his arm and my shoulder. It feels like he's looming over me and looking up at his face, it's clear his eyes are scanning me over. What's the matter? Are you sure you're alright? You could have gotten hurt. 
As if asking that hap- that, that, as if a- blah. As if asking that opened the floodgates. He turns towards me and grabs the sides of my face, moving it around to get better glimpses at all parts of my head. What are you doing? Checking to see if you got any bruises or cuts. To make it worse, he lets go of my head and starts checking the rest of my body, too. It wouldn't be so bad if Oscar hadn't looked over his shoulder and is actively watching Lee dote on me like some dad or overprotective boyfriend. Why would I lie? I told you. I'm fine. I, I meant it. Yeah, but Charlie wouldn't. He hesitates at the mention of his sister like something he said made him realize something that I don't have any knowledge of. Whatever it is, though, it's enough to get him to pull away, but not enough to take that concerned look out of his eye. Okay, but be careful. Don't be afraid to come to me if you get hurt. I, I will. Thankfully, that's the end of that, and he doesn't try to prod me for the rest of the journey down the stairwell, and we eventually find ourselves down to the next floor. Mm. I think we're on the first floor of wards. Look, each of the room numbers starts with one. I think that's our floor number. Each of them are locked, though. They've never been locked to the hospital I've been to. To emphasize her point, Lily grabs the ner nearby door handle to, ro to, room one to room 128 and pulls putting her entire weight behind it. Despite the sliding door rattling, it doesn't budge at all. It's a better sign than nothing at all, like the doors on the floor I woke up on. Probably closed it when this place shut down. No reason to keep them open, you know? It makes logical sense, and there's nothing particularly wrong with it, but something about it feels like we're missing a piece of the puzzle. Everything about this place is so strange, and it feels closer to a funhouse. Uh, through the small window in the door, I can barely, I can barely make out the dark room. There's a few objects of note, but only one catches my eye. A picture of a small boy on the beach with the words, Tomorrow could always be a brighter day. It's a general motivational poster, but it brings a sinking feeling to my stomach. I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, why? But there's something about that poster that feels like it's causing a bile at the back of my throat. Guys, look! There's an exit over there! Gotta lead to a way out! It's a welcome interruption from Oscar, pointing ahead towards a distant, faint green sign hanging from the roof in the distance. It should be lit up, but the bulb that's kept it lit has likely blown over time. The rest of our group looks excited, that and that, and that distracts them enough to not see how sickly my complexion has become. It'll, pa it'll pass soon enough. It always does. A group follows the otter, who's trying to contain himself from running off ahead. It looks like he even understands this isn't the time to be messing around. Even when he's excited to do something fun, he wasn't this antsy. This place is getting to everyone. There's only so much you can stare at there's only so much you can there's only so much you can stare at peeling paint and decrepit walls before it starts to dig into your brain. Walking past another door, I notice something through the window. On the other side of the room, there's a window that looks over some kind of courtyard, one I haven't seen the entrance to anywhere, and there's someone standing there. It's the same large figure from before, standing next to a statue of what it, of what looks like an angel. There's a source of light behind him causing his figure to silhouette and hide his feature and hide its features, but I swear he looks over and stares at me for a moment. Then he slams his fist against the glass, causing it to nearly shatter. The entire window is cracked to the point where nothing can be viewed beyond it. Even color is mostly hidden by the white of broken glass. The sound isn't able to penetrate through the doors, but it's like I can feel the force behind it, and it squeezes the lungs out of my chest. That thing isn't coming for us, is he? If he is, then we need to get out of here as soon as possible. We don't want to be here if he's as hostile as he's acting. Wait, calm down. I don't even know if he was able to see me. And even if he wa and even and even if he did want to hurt us, this place is like a maze. The odds of him fighting us before we move on is pretty rare. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. It's late at night. I'm getting tired. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a comment if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.